Hello, this is PTTGRW, and welcome to your mod spotlight over the Kerbal Attachment System. This mod was originally developed by Cosby, with help from Win75 doing some models and textures, and ZZZ also with models and textures. Currently the mod is being maintained by Majir, who is also the mod author of the Keythane plugin. Now, without any further ado, Let's get started by launching our craft here. Throttle up and go. Now, some of you may have seen the Kerbal Attachment System on the forums or on Spaceport and not really known what it does. Well, it adds a whole ton of parts that we can use to retrofit different vehicles or rockets that we have in space, like probes. Our current mission that we're actually going to be doing here is bringing some solar panels to a satellite that we forgot to outfit with them in initial launch. Now we're getting some weird oscillations here, but before we can continue to show you the grab function, which is what we'll be using in Kerbal Attachment System, we are going to go, I'm going to finish getting into space and rendezvous with our satellite. And once that's all done, I'll be right back and I'll show you how to retrofit your different vessels. As you can see, we got a pretty successful rendezvous. We did have to cut into our inter our transfer stage, but we should still have plenty of delta v left over to make it to the moon and get a successful orbit around there. But if you notice, we don't have any docking ports on this vessel or really any way to connect it to our satellite here. And this satellite has the same predicament, where it doesn't have anything to really connect it. Now, the way we're going to make this work is first we're going to turn this so it's facing, its tank is facing sideways. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get Bob out of his vessel here and we're going to turn on his EVA pack because we're going to be moving something. Now, when, Kerb when Kerbal Attachment System says that it adds a grab function, what it's talking about is this. When you right click on something, such as the radial connector port, you have this option called grab, hotkey G key. Well, when you grab it, you put it on your back. And what you can do with it on your back is you can fly it over to another vessel well, you can right-click on it, and you can see different options. Unplug, drop, and attach. Drop does as it implies. Your, your Kerbal will just let go of it. He'll no longer carry it. However, attach is what we're seeking to use. Attach will allow us to attach this part on any side of the vessel. Prefer preferably this fuel tank. We left-click, and we now attached that port onto it. We're going to be doing that with the solar panels later, but for now we need to secure this vessel so we stop drifting away from it. We don't want to lose Bob in space. Now this is a winch. This piece highlighted is a winch. When you right click on it, you have a couple options, lock connector and grab. Well, we're going to grab the connector. Now this winch has a 50 meter length and we're tethered to it because the port is on our EVA pack. So if we were to control the winch, we would actually be moving Bob around. But we need to tie it to this vessel. So the winches, when you grab them and you bring them over to one of these connector ports, we can right click the port and we can choose plug undocked or plug docked. Well, we're going to dock it. Need to be a little closer. Or there we go. Now it's plugged. If you notice, the part that was on our EVA pack is now attached to that connector port. Now, these two vessels are docked together. Not the typical way Kerbal Space Program docks vessels, but they are docked. So, let's put Bob back in his ship here and see if we can't tie this vessel, bring this vessel a little bit closer so we can run some maintenance. To prove these two vessels are docked, we can actually access this one. We can shut down the engine or activate the engine. We can choose where we want to control the vessel. Well, we're just going to make sure, so we're going to say control from there. Now, the winch is what we're here for. If we right-click it, you can see we have a ton of options. 
All of these buttons are easily accessed through the GUI, so we're going to show that. Now, the GUI has a ton of functionality. First off, it gives you the name of the winch you're using, and it will highlight it when you mouse over. See that winch there? It highlights when I mouse over. You can rename these winches so they're more easily identified, such as top, and we can set that. Now this one's called top because it's on the top of our vessel. Now these buttons here allow us to extend and retract this cable, the cable connecting our two vessels. If you can see, we also got some weird spin going on. But this number represents the current cable's length, and this is the distance the cable can travel before there's strain. If the cable goes under too much strain, it will break. Now, let's retract the cable. Well, one, we threw it into a violent spin. And this can be a problem because you think that the two vessels are going to crash. Well, the vessels are docked. In part of Kerbal Space Program, as you just saw, two docked vessels cannot collide with each other. So, as you can see, when this number goes purple, there's strain, and you can see it's turning our current vessel. Well, this is unexpected. We just lost our engine because of the random spinning nature we're getting. Well, let's see if we can quickly bring this in so we stop any more destruction this wants to cause. Now, this vessel doesn't want to work properly. Let's see if we can't slow it down. Now, looks like we're reaching into the night. There, that's what I wanted to see. Even though we lost our engine, it's a probe, so we don't really need it. It's already in the orbit we want. That was just to change its orbit if needed. But now we have this attached. So now, when we rotate this vessel, this winch is docked itself to the radial connector port we put on. Now, because it is dark and it's probably getting pretty hard to see, I'm just going to wait out this orbit and come back when we reach our when we reach the daylight side of the planet again. Okay, now that we're back on the day side, we can continue. Now, I'm just going to finish up the last couple of configurations you have in the winch control. You can release it, which just lets go. The winch lets go of its connector port. Eject fires off the connector port. These two allow you to retract and extend automatically. This is the motor speed. This is how quickly your winch will retract and extend cable. These two change the port. We'll see those later. We've already seen plug mode. If it was not fully retracted, we could change the plug mode from docked to undocked. If it was undocked, it would collide with our vessel and we wouldn't be able to access it such as we can here. And unplug will do as how we plugged our cable into the connector port. Unplug will just do the same except unplug it rather than plug it. But since we have these vessels docked, why don't we bring a little bit extra fuel in seeing as how this one lost its engine. And we can just transfer fuel normally through this. Now that we have a little bit of extra fuel, now we need to equip our satellite and I guess this fuel tank too. But now we need to equip our satellite with some solar panels. And Bob here is going to do that for us. Let's bring him back out in EVA. Turn on our EVA pack. And we can get solar panels from two ways. One are the boxes that we have down here. Or missed them. Right here in the middle we have some of these containers and in these containers if we get close enough and right click we can open them now that one has some parachutes in a command seat we'll see use of those later but this is the one I want this one has the photovoltaic panel we'll take that now, photovoltaic panel is just a fancy way of saying solar panel. And we put this on our back, much like we put that radial connector port. Now, we can EVA over to our vessel, 
find a nice place we want to attach the solar panel and push attach. Now green means we can attach it. Yellow means it's out of range and because we're not on a planet we don't see red but red means it's not allowed to attach regardless of how far away it is. But since it's green let's left click. Now we've attached this solar panel to the second vessel and we can extend it. Now this vessel formerly did not have any power generation but now it does. So now when we undock our vessels this satellite will be able to get power by itself. And I'm just speeding up the process here of attaching a second solar panel so that we can make our probe feel a little more completed. Well, now that we've given this satellite some power, let's put Bob back in his ship to get back to the real mission on the moon. If you notice, we do have landing legs, and we will be landing on the moon because we need to rescue Bill and Jebediah who have been stranded. They ran out of fuel in their lander, and we need to go bring them some more. But now that we've gotten this satellite retrofitted, how about we release it? Now you can do this a couple ways. You can right-click the radial connector port and unplug it. You can right-click the winch and unplug it. Or, just to be safe, we're going to push it away a little bit. Now, it's probably not going to, yeah. Probably the biggest trick is getting the vessels to separate after you've gotten them together. Because we don't want these to collide once we release it. But it doesn't look like it wants to just drift away. Now, one way around this is to actually use the eject. Because watch what happens when we push the eject. it's going to push a small amount of force onto the plug when it ejects it, which is actually pushing it away. Now if we didn't have such a mass massive object, then it would apply a lot more force. But now that it's drifting away, we're going to unplug it and let it go free. And we'll just retract this back because we have use for it later. Just hit release if you get that little glitch where it doesn't want to move. And this vessel's all set. We can close out that. Now we're ready for a transfer state. But since I do have to go to the moon for a final mission, I'll meet you guys there as I'm landing. Now, while we're waiting for a transfer to the moon, I'm going to show you about containers because I didn't explain these earlier. When the container is on your vessel, you can right click on it and push open container. You can also do this in EVA mode. When you open up the container, you get this window. And this window tells you everything that's in, your sh in the container itself. For example, this is the quantity. We have one external command seat and we have four radial mount parachutes. The command seat weighs 0.05 and the parachutes all together weigh 0.15. Now the seat takes up 20 space. Now, space is just how big the container is. This container is a max space of 80 and currently used as 40. We also get to know the exact weight of the container. This matters when you're designing ships because if the weight is unbalanced, then you know what happens when you try to lift off. Now, each parachute only has five, but since we have four of them, four times five is 20, plus 20 from the ex external command seat, we have our 40. They work quite simply. Next, I have them all connected to these container bays. The container bays are used for holding the containers. And if I were to push release, then this container, type B, would disconnect, kind of like how we disconnected our satellite earlier. But there's the basics on containers, and I'll meet you when we get to the moon. Welcome to the moon base, where we have Jebediah and Bill who are stranded. They don't quite have enough fuel to make it back home, so that's why we needed to have Bob launch a mission to bring them some liquid fuel. Now, he's currently in orbit around the moon, and he has told them to prep 
when he lands so that he can quickly transfer some fuel and they can get out of here. So to do this, we're going to switch to our two, one of our two rovers. Now both these rovers we're going to want to extract because they have tons of science on them. And we don't quite have the technology to run a Kerbal out here and just grab the science out of them and then leave them behind. So we want to bring them back. Now let's turn off the brakes and line these up. We're going to be using the winches again, which is the same method we got them here. Now all we have to do is line them up relatively straight and we're going to use Jebediah to help us out with connecting these up. Now much like how we connected the satellite to our main vessel, whoa, little far there, but much like how we connected the satellite to our main vessel, we're going to connect these rovers. The difference is these rovers have the stack winch which makes it a lot easier to dock them together when they reach zero length and are actually connected to the winch itself. And let's bring over our second rover here. He was just getting some power. We were considering transferring the science, but once we heard that Bob could give us a successful pickup, then we decided we wanted the full science we could get. Now, how we're going to transfer the fuel between these two vessels, even though we can't dock them, isn't going to be with the winches. We're going to use some pipes. Because the pipes just have a more aesthetically pleasing way. You can do it with the winches, but the pipes just kind of help you see that these are specific for resource transfer. And we're going to hit it. Landing leg a little bit. Rovers don't have the best braking power. and we'll lock the brakes again. Now that we've got these set up, let's get back to our main vessel and open up the GUI like we had earlier. Now we have our two winches and we need to retract them. Let's turn the motor speeds up so we can do this more quickly. Now you can also push this one like I said earlier to automatically extend it and you can just push the button again to stop it. Now that should be plenty extended, but the other one's not quite there yet. So, out a little bit more. That should be fine. That's all we need to do for here. Let's pop Jebediah out. Let's get to work. Now, like before, we can grab onto these either by right clicking or much easier using the hotkey which is Y and that'll snap it to our back. Now if we come over here and right click this we can tell it to plug undocked or docked. Well we don't need to plug it docked but we're going to anyway just to avoid that possible collision because we don't want to destroy our vessel. So that's plugged in now let's go get the other one. walk right under our vessel here. Again, Y to pick that up, nice and easy, hotkey. And plug this one docked as well. There, now we have one big craft here. Now, you might have noticed the fuel tank, well, they're already empty. We already tried to transfer the fuel to see if we could get enough. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough even with the fuel from the rovers to bring this back up and make it home. So, now that we've got those taken care of, we're going to retract them, but first we do need Bob to get down here because this vessel by itself will not be able to land on these four parachutes. If we want to land our rovers, we're going to have to give them some parachutes of their own and then detach them while we're coming in to end the orbit. But I'll meet you guys back when we're landing. Bob here should be coming down almost directly on top, and let's not forget our landing gear. But he's not too far away. We should be able to deal with this. 
see if we actually can't maneuver ourselves a little bit closer because we do have the extra fuel these nuclear engines are extremely efficient there that should be perfect just need to be close enough to be able to use our utilities don't need to be directly on top of the target let's start slowing down don't want to come this far and crash nice gentle landing beautiful well now that we're down here we can go we can pull Bob out and we can grab on to that was a little weird uh, that's another mod item but it's not part of this one so let's make sure we got the right one command C parachute there we go some parachutes now we've got four in there and we need to attach four to each of these rovers but we're not going to make four trips that would take forever so we're going to grab the entire container itself now one thing you'll notice about the grab function is some of the larger objects that are heavier are going to make your Kerbal run a little bit odd but we should still be able to fly apparently not apparently we're a little too heavy so we're going to run this over and this might take a little bit well now that we moved our container over here we can start retrofitting this rover how we're going to do this is we're going to open up the container and we're going to take the radial mount parachute out of the container move this window out of the way and we are going to attach it where we need it now I think one right there should be fine and let's grab the second one push attach again right there should work let's pick up our third and these also give your Kerbal a little bit of a weird run animation just due to their size. We can push attach right on the back. Open the container for the final time with our last parachute. And we can attach it on the other side to make sure that everything is nice and balanced. Now another thing just to note while I'm doing this is you can add your own parts to the attach to the Kerbal attachment system grab function and its attachability. So instead of just having some stock parts such as the parachute and the containers along with the solar panels I showed earlier, you can put your own parts in. For example, if we go back to this vessel down here then I'll show you one of the parts that I added by itself. Now one of the parts that I added using module manager is the modular girder segment. So I can actually pick this up and do note you can actually use these as kind of decouplers because as you saw every part connected to it fell apart. It fell off meaning if I were to take these modular girder segments off I could literally detach these entire engine segments but for the modular girder segment it's its own grab part with its own drop and another thing I did to it was I made it its own container and I'll be showing you how to do these in a part B of this uh, mod spotlight because I can actually open the container and inside I have a grappling hook and electromagnet now you'll be seeing those in a little bit but 
because I have the part, let me grab, actually, let me retrofit my other rover with these parachutes and I will be right back. One quick fun thing to note is you can extend the panels while they're on your Kerbal's back and if you had the life support mod where Kerbal's need to carry some electric charge you would actually get electric charge from this. One interesting note to make about these container bays is when you push release it's going to drop what's currently in it but also since we can grab the containers we can right click and we can store the containers back in the bay for a perfect connection versus just assuming where we would connect the bay now that in mind I'm gonna show you one of my favorite features now if you've played with the modular girder segments in the VAB you know that you know on each side of them they have a connector node and since we can grab them, I've made them containers in the coding, which means if we push store, they will stick together perfectly evenly connected. So instead of having to push attach to assume the best perfect even connection, we could just push store and have them connect perfectly. Also, in not that one but in this one I have another modular girder segment which the size the space is set to a hundred which is kind of unfair seeing as how you can store five girder segments inside themselves but uh, balancing is was not a concern of mine at the time now there's nothing in that one but I do have keythane installed and if I open this container, you'll see I have a couple things, such as the external drilling unit from Keythane. Now, I made this a grabbable part, and you'll see how to do that, because I'll use this one specifically along with the girder segments in the second part of this spotlight. But we can deploy the drill, or we can attach it. And now that it's attached there, let's go grab another part, such as the external keythane manifold. This is the small keythane tank. It holds 150. And we can also attach this. Now remember, you can push B and N to rotate. So we're going to rotate it and we're going to set it there. Now what I'm building here is basically a small deployable miner that you can just build off planet. And this is probably my favorite feature in the entire Kerbal attachment system thing abilities that you can do with it basically because if I were to have scanned this place for keythane earlier then let's pick this back up really quick deploy the drill and we can attach it with the drill deployed and if this if there was keythane below us this drill because it's got power from the solar panel would legitimately pick up the keythane and store it in the manifold. And the reason this works is because every part that you drop you can switch to. So I'm just switching through a couple really quickly looking for this one I just built. Here it is. And when I click here it's got the resources. Keythane, 0 of 150. Now if I were to put a battery we'd even get electric charge but since I don't have a battery all it's running off is the solar panel and it does have energy flow now those external command seats I could attach one and then I could jump on this vessel and control it since rover wheels are valid to be part of Kerbal attachment system you can put rover wheels and build a rover off planet storing them in containers like those and this allows a huge amount of versatility since you can add your own parts you could add a bunch of girder segments, attach them perfectly on top of each other, and build a huge base or construct just out of Kerbal attachment parts. Now, let's switch back to Bill, Bill or Bob, Bob, because now that we've retrofitted our rovers, it's time to do our fuel transfer. Now, that might be a little far for the fuel 
transfer to work properly, but we're still going to try it. Now, this is the ground pile, and this is another part added by Kerbal Attachment System. And this is another really neat one because of what it adds. Now, this one can attach to static. Few parts can, but when you attach it to the static, it basically you can attach it to planets or buildings at the Kerbal Space Center. Those are static objects. And another thing here is the pipe endpoint. Now these, you attach them to fuel tanks specifically. If I can get my camera right. You attach them specifically to fuel tanks. And we'll take another one. Don't need that anymore. And you can also we should probably bring this out a little bit more. Let's run this way real quick. Drop that. But the pipe endpoints, back to them. Don't forget G hotkey. The pipe endpoints, you can that when you attach them together or link them as they call it, then what happens is They become docked, basically, once I find the words. Now, what the ground pylons were designed for is attaching things such as the pipe endpoints and pushing link. Now, when you link a pipe endpoint, you get this green, basically, pipe. Now, let's break our solar panel, or not, durable, durable solar panel. But as long as you have line of sight and are within range, then it will be green. If it turns yellow, that means you're out of range, and if it turns red, that means it doesn't have line of sight. But if you come up close to another pipe endpoint, you can push link and unlink to disable this. But now that they're linked, you can see we can transfer fuel from this vessel over there. And if we go into our other container and grab the other pylon, then we can link these two vessels. Now, I'll be back in just a minute and make sure this is all set up to work properly. Now, we ran out of pipe endpoints. Apparently, we didn't pack enough, but this can be solved. We can just attach our winch over to this one. Now, unlike the winches, which have um, an av three of them have 50 meter length, where one of them has an 80 meter length, the pipe endpoints can only go about 10 meters. So that's pretty much the max range you're going to get from them any further and they won't be allowed to connect. But we can just plug docked and now both these vessels are docked together. This should allow us to do our resource resource transfer that we need. Now we just need to find one of our vessels here. Got a lot of stuff going on. Here. This is the entire docked thing and as you see, Kerbal Space Program naturally tries to center out the mass. But we can right click on one tank right over there. And I'll click the other one. Now we can transfer some fuel in. And we don't necessarily need to transfer all the fuel. And you can see the camera panning to shift with the change in weight. Now that should be enough. We do want enough so left so that Bob can get back as well. But that should be more than enough to get this one back, and that still leaves enough for Bob to get back. Now, since the fuel transfer is done, we don't need these connected anymore. So, let's unplug that, and the camera pans to shift its weight back here. Now, let's just reconnect our rover, and I'll be right back. And as I did say, you can just push unlink to get rid of the connection. Now for probably my favorite part about the winches and Kerbal Attachment System. Let's open up the GUI again. Now let's find the winch. This one here on the right, which is winch number one. Now we're going to lower its motor speed because we don't want any uh, jerky motion. Now, when we retract this, actually we can go a little bit faster. When we retract this, you'll notice our rover is starting to lift up. 
and our landing legs should be able to hold us so this is the reason we docked otherwise we would have had some broken stuff right there now when we fully retract it oh crap that's not good well let's see if we can't fix that um, well that was unexpected to be fully honest with you looks like one rover won't be coming back with us well due to that horrible incident that we had there which I've never had happen before I felt as though it was a little bit unfair so after a little bit of editing I decided why not just make the winches attachable parts that would fix my problems wouldn't it well guess what our winch is back back and ready to make that attempt number two we will just grab the connector and take a quick leap off the edge and go see if we can't reattach this to the rover without destroying the rover too badly now this is what I really do love about Kerbal Attachment System. When something like that breaks and it just doesn't seem as though it should have happened, you can just find your part and reattach it. So let's replug it there and let's go for round two. Uh, here we go. Now let's open up GUI one more time and do note that this winch is again part of our vessel and we can still retract it so see if we can't earn a little bit of redemption for what happened now I'm gonna see if I can take it a little more slowly this time because I've honestly never had that happen to me before. But slow this down. And hopefully it won't happen again. Oh, that's way too slow. And connect. There we go. This is what I was originally expecting to happen but that's not quite lined up this is another part of the winches if we just drop that the slightest amount we can turn it as you see the rover is now spinning and we can spin it a full 360 degrees but we are going to leave it a little bit more we're gonna leave it about there because that is pretty well connected on the outside and let's grab our second vessel and do the same exact thing well, as you can see we're just slowly retracting it up until it reaches the winch in which case that stack connector we have on the side is gonna let it lock in and it locks in much easier than the radial connector ports that we saw on our satellite and good it worked nice and the orientation is only a little bit off so we're just gonna fix that there perfect but since these are only connected by the two winches we need a little bit more to make sure they're nice and secure and for that we have some struts I'll be right back with those now if you can see there's this little tiny port here and that's a strut endpoint. When we push link to the one I have attached to the rover, we get this thin green line, much similar to the pipelines. And when we click on a second one and push link, we just created a strut. Now, do note the strut only works for docked vessels. And since our rovers are docked through the winches, it works. So now this rover is a bit more secure, and I'm just going to go over and secure the other one real quick successfully retrofitted and refueled our vessel is now ready to go back home to Kerbin and we're gonna take right off here 
Now, there might be a small difference in the thrust simply because both rovers are not perfectly aligned, but we do have enough torque in our capsule here to accommodate for that. And we're just going to get into orbit. Bob is going to stay behind because he's only been on the moon for a few minutes and he wants to spend maybe a day or two here before he comes home. But he's got plenty of fuel. But we're just going to go back to Kerbin and return Bill and Jebediah safely. Now, in the Kerbal Attachment System, all of your parts are in the Utility tab. You have your containers, actually. Let's first drop one of these out. You have your containers, you have the container bay, and you have all of these parts. Now we've gone over the ground pylons, the pipe endpoints, the strut endpoints, we've gone over this particular winch, but they all work the same. Radial connector port, containers, and container bays. Now, one thing to definitely note is the container bays are radial connect, and that's how I connected these. These don't radially connect. However, I will show you how they work in the VAB themselves. Now, you place one on your craft, and you right-click it. You push Edit Container. Now, here you can look at all the parts that you're able to stick in here as long as they are set to storable. Now, the first number is the size, mass, and quantity. Now, you've seen down here it's the same. All you have to do is push Add. And then down here is the container contents. This is what is inside your container. This is how you add and store parts back into this container. And you can have the tabs look through what you want and add up until all of your space is full. They're quite simple to use and are very powerful. Now I'm going to show you how to use the grappling hooks and the electromagnets. Okay, so in this part, I'm going to be showing off the grappling hook. Now, unplug does nothing because we're not hooked up to a winch. But what the grappling hook does is when you come at a vessel with enough velocity, then you will automatically attach to the vessel. And this amount of velocity is about 4 meters per second. As you can see, now I'm attached to it because now if I try to back away I can't. I pull the whole vessel around. And when we right click on our grappling hook then you see it's attached to the fuel tank. Now we're not docked to this vessel much like how the electromagnet works but this one does not require any power and it holds us pretty sturdy. The only downside is we can't unhook it unless we have a Kerbal nearby. But what we can do is we can use it to just take a small probe like this, slam it into a larger probe, and either leave it connected forever or connect it for a short period of time. And then because we're using our hook support, push release. And once we've done whatever maintenance type thing we needed to do, we can just back away. With that being said, let's go look at the electromagnet, which I also have here. Now, the electromagnet works the same way in attaching itself. It attaches itself, but it doesn't dock. The difference is, it has two states. It has an on state and an off state. When it's turned on, it will clamp to anything it touches, and during the off state, it will act just like a normal colliding part. Do note it drains four power, for electric charge per second, so you do need to keep it powered. But as you can see, if we try to back away, we pull the whole vessel with us much like the grappling hook. The difference, however, is once we settle here, the difference is that when we right click it and change its state to off, we automatically disconnect and we won't reconnect unless we turn it back on and we get some weird spinning here and 
and we're connected again. I'm not doing anything to control this, this is just its strange spin that it got itself into. But only while the electromagnet is on will you connect to virtually any side or any part as long as you can collide with it. And it's not like a planet, it's not a static. As long as it's a part, you will collide with it. And you can do the same thing as the grappling hook. You can bring back the UI here. You can just push release on the hook support and you'll drop the electromagnet. However, when we do this, the electromagnet will also float away because now this vessel is no longer powering the electromagnet, so it no longer has power and is forcibly disconnected. Now, you can see here, this is my attempt at creating an airship. Now, the item I'm using is the anchor, and it has a relatively high mass compared to most of the other objects. It's got a one mass unit versus something like the grappling hook, which only has 0.01. But you can see I'm attempting to make an airship anchor with it. And surprisingly, it does actually work quite well because the anchor has traction when it's colliding with other objects and the friction is what's allowing my airship to stay put and to reel itself into the ground. With Jebediah and Bill safely returned to Kerbin, this concludes our mod spotlight. For recap, the mod was the Kerbal Attachment System, the game is the Kerbal Space Program. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. If you think I missed something or you would like me to go into more detail, please do leave a comment and I will get around to reading it. This is PTTGRW, signing off.